Hi all. In this lecture, we will be talking about matching and merging in Simaki. In Simaki, there are three types of entities basic, ID matched, and fuzzy entities, and there are two types of matching. So let's start with ID matching first. So it is used mainly when there is unique key or common key or identifiers across all your source systems, which can be used for matching purposes. This is mostly seen with domains like product. Then we have got fuzzy matching, which finds duplicates based on custom rules and algorithms, which we define in something called as matcher in Simaki. These will detect similar data as well as exact matches. So fuzzy matching is not only restricted for similar matching or fuzzy matching, but we can define your exact match rules as well in fuzzy matching. This is mainly used when there are no consistent keys or identifiers or unique keys across your source systems. And this is mostly seen in customer or other complex domains. When doing data entries, duplicate detection will occur based on the defined matcher for fuzzy matched entities or primary key for ID matched entities. Now for basic entities, they don't support matching and consolidation, but we can still define a matcher so that if someone is trying to create a duplicate uh, entry from the from the user interface, they can actually get an error that this record already exists. So we can use matcher in basic entity as well for these kind of purposes. Moving to the next slide, we'll continue talking about matching. So matching must detect the duplicate pair of records that match because they are somehow similar. Now they could be based on uh, certain attributes or they could be exactly same or we have to enrich the data before we kind of uh, try to match them up so that will depend on your data quality of your source data. Multiple match rules can be used in one matcher so one matcher can have multiple rules and they act they act as a filter so basically you can start with the closest match so your first rule should be your exact matches basically if you know that your data has few attributes or, or fields which can be used for exact matching and then you can loosen out a bit so your first rule could be your exact matches your second rule could be your combination of fuzzy match and exact matches and your third rule could be your exactly fuzzy matches uh, criteria each condition rule has a matching score. So we define a threshold value to each score. If any two records passes that criteria, then they are considered as a, as a matching group. The score that we assign to uh, every rule is a percentage of confidence that we give to a pair of records matched by that condition or rule. So if, let's say what will happen if two records um, gets passed through multiple match rules and are successful. So when two records match, they receive the match score equal to the highest score of all the rules they matched on. For example, let's say if we have got two records and they are matching, they are matching by match rule 2 with a score of 85 and they also got matched with a match rule 3 of, of value 20. Now they should be getting the match score of 85 irrespective of whatever the match rule 3 says because it always gets the highest value. Moving to the next slide, we'll talk about binning now. So what is binning? Binning is basically where you can create the subsets of data for your matching records to be matched against. So let's say you won't be matching uh, John Doe in London, UK with John Doe in United States or John Doe in Australia because that doesn't make sense. So binning is basically used to create subsets of data to match across. Whichever matching technology or vendor tool you are using, you cannot compare every record against every other record because that will be a lot of comparisons and computation. With, with growing uh, of records um, and over the time, this will become very much challenging for your MDM to handle. So matching can be made much more efficient by only matching on subsets of data. For example, if looking at customer data, a subset based on your country and city could be created so you can only compare customers within that same city and country. Uh, again, this is just an example which we talked about before, where John Doe in London, UK cannot be matched with John Doe in New York, US or in Australia or Singapore. Matches using 
matches uses uh, semisql to create expression to compare record one and two within a pin and decide if they are duplicate. So that's how actual matching happens in Simulky. Moving to the next slide, let's talk about merge policies now. So once we have defined all our matching rules, we need to define what do we want to do with those matched records. So merge policies defines the confidence score required to automatically merge groups. So let's say if you have got two records uh, which have been defined um, as a matching group by your matcher what do you want to do with that do you want them to be automatically merged or do you want to give it as a suggestion to the data steward to consider it whether they should be merged or not so in this section if i talk about we have got so many different components within merge policy let's say create a golden record from your master record you can confirm, you can merge unconfirmed golden records, you can merge confirmed golden records, and so on. So, these are the thresholds that we can provide based on what you want to achieve uh, once you have got two match, matched records uh, from your matcher. This is auto confirm policy, which says if the threshold is passed, which we define here, then those two records will be merged automatically. So, if I talk about few more things. The merge policy enables us to define when a group of matched records should be automatically merged. Best practices set match scores in match rules at any number that is not a multiple of 10. Set merge policy threshold at multiple of 10. A confidence score threshold which we define here as numbers is defined. Only confidence scores above that value will be automatically merged. So even if it's 70 or 70 or 90 or 80 they won't be merged it has to be above that threshold let's talk about the first option where we say create a golden record from new master records so the first option frequently happen when new master records are loaded into the hub so let's say you're doing it for the very first first time you have got so many source systems you are loading the data into the hub and they are matched and merged so that is an initial data load. The first time we call it as initial data load and then the increments will be your delta loads. So with a value set to 70 and match group with a confidence score of above 70 that matches this criteria will automatically be merged. Anything 70 or below will not be merged automatically but it's proposed for merging through data steward suggested match. So that's what we were talking about uh, for the merge policies. Now, if you want to know all these things in detail with examples, again, I would suggest that you go back to your Simaki documentation. So, if I go back to Simaki HTML documentation, Data Hub Design, In Certification, Match and Merge. If I click this, there's a very detailed description of how matching works along with examples as well. Please go through this so that you can actually understand how matching and merge policies are defined or should be defined in Simon. So if we talk about automate merge and confirmation here, you can see about the merge policy that we were seeing on the screen and the detailed description of those. So please go through these in case you want to know them in more detail. So this covers our first part of match and merge. Thank you.